Okay, so this is the $60 pipe polishing attachment. Now, these are available on eBay and Amazon, and the big critical key component that you wanna look for if you're gonna buy one of these is right here. This is the drive wheel. Now, this one is 5 8 11, which is what's going to thread onto the arbor of your angle grinder if you're in the US like I am. If you're in Europe, maybe you have a metric threaded angle grinder, so you should probably buy a threaded drive wheel that fits your grinder. This is the other part of the equation that I prefer, but I'm gonna talk about a corded version for this as well. This is a Milwaukee cordless angle grinder. It's got a little speed dial back here. And I also prefer to get the one with the slide switch versus the little kind of momentary switch because I like to turn this thing on and then you can hold it in different positions and uh, makes life a little easier. I'll show you how I install this on this particular grinder. So you've got to take off the guard and then there's this little guard lock and it's held on with a little Phillips head screw. We're gonna take that off as well. Okay, there's also a little spring right here on this grinder that we can take out so it doesn't get lost. And then you put all this stuff in a bag or something, just put it somewhere so you don't lose it because you're gonna need those pieces if you ever wanna use the guard on your grinder again. Now, the reason we took that off is because there's this little clamp here on the back of the spring-loaded wheel mechanism, and that's gonna actually have to clamp to the grinder. Uh, and if you have that stuff on there, you can't actually get the clamp to engage. So this clamp here on the back slides over this little collar and then you tighten it up with a Phillips head screwdriver. Now this has to be tight, so make sure that you spend the time to get this thing really solid on there, because if it's loose, it's just gonna pop off the grinder. The screw is actual garbage, so it might be harder to make it tight than it really should be. And maybe this screw needs to be replaced with something else. So the screw on mine just like immediately stripped. It's an M6 by one. So I'm just gonna replace it with a hex head screw and this will do the job and maybe make the clamp a little bit tighter. Now your results may vary. The other one of these that I have, the screw wasn't so crappy and it worked out really well. So anyway, we're gonna stick that back on there and continue our installation just with a better piece of hardware. Again, this has to be tight because you don't really want it moving around once you start. All right, it's way better, nice and solid. So now that you've got the bracket on, if you go to thread your drive wheel on, what you're gonna find is that as you go to tighten it, the kind of screws on the back are gonna hit the frame. So the way that I resolved that the last time I set one of these up, was I had this three quarter inch lock washer and that was actually like the perfect offset and also gave a little positive resistance to keep this thing from bottoming out, but also kept my spacing nice. So I'm just gonna hand tighten this and it's out of the way, it'll still rotate and then we have our alignment. So the rest of the setup of this is literally just putting on this handle and then taking some belts out of the bag. It comes with belts and the belt size on this is one and a half by 30, but you can also get away with using one by 30 belts if you want to um, use a very specific belt that you would maybe use for like a little belt grinder. So here's a one and a half by 30. This belt is an aluminum oxide 120 and you put it on simply by compressing the arms Make sure it's on the drive hub. Let's get a battery and this thing is ready to go. All right, so again, this is a variable speed angle grinder. We're gonna set it down to one, the slowest setting, which on this grinder is 3,500 RPM. And you can see how it works. Now there's no way to adjust the tracking, but if you look at the way these idler wheels are shaped, they sort of almost have like a concave design. It's just not as sophisticated as I guess they could have been made. 
Um, so that those little steps keep the belt tracking nice. Let me show you how it works. So here's an example of a piece of two inch round tube. And I'm just gonna do a little quick sanding on the outside so you can see it and then I'll show you some other applications. So you can see what happens if you give it too much pressure and you slip off the side. This thing is under constant belt tension, so you have to be a little bit careful how hard you press. But if you're careful with it, you can really get great smooth results. So you can see this thing can really flex around a piece of material. Uh, again, I like to use the grinders that have a locking switch because I want to have one hand on the grinder body and one hand on the handle. And just like that, this thing will really grab around. I can already see my little uh, thing is getting a little loose on my grinder. So I just got to go and tighten it up again because it's moving around. So here's a smaller piece of steel and uh, you can see it'll also curve around a smaller piece. So one of the nice things about this one and a half by 30 length is that you can put surface conditioning belts that you'd use by a, on a one by 30 grinder on this. They don't work as well, but you can get a nice kind of surface finish uh, if you use those. I haven't found a uh, inexpensive inch and a half by 30 surface conditioning belt, but the one by 30 ones are pretty cheap. You can see how a one by 30 belt fits on there. super smooth with this little surface conditioning belt and just so, so fast, very, very consistent and uh, just a great, a great relatively inexpensive tool. All right, so I bought this attachment on Amazon. It was about $65. Uh, the last one I bought was like 55 bucks. The prices always vary. There's a bunch of sellers basically selling the same thing. And this isn't my first experience with one of these. Uh, this grinder I used in this uh, How I Make Money TIG welding project. I got a lot of questions about it. It's exactly the same product, but the seller that I bought this one from doesn't sell them anymore. And I bought a brand new uh, variable speed angle grinder for uh, the purposes of having one of these permanently set up all the time. Now this particular grinder, uh, I've gotten these as cheap as 165 bucks on eBay. Um, they're a little more expensive if you buy them from like Home Depot, they're like in the twos. But at the bare basic lowest cost, I've bought this set up brand new. Uh, you're at about $220. Now I know it might seem expensive, but competing products that you have to plug in uh, like this, was I wanna say $185 when I bought it five years ago. Now this is the exact same thing, uh, except the spring arms are not made out of metal. They're made out of, or no, maybe they're made out of aluminum. Yeah, they're made out of cast aluminum. Um, and this is like a larger, almost like buffer frame. Now this grinder goes down much, much slower, uh, but I found that it doesn't really have a great amount of torque and the wheels, uh, the tracking isn't great, but if you only have the option to buy something with a tail and a cord, uh, I'll put some links where you can get one of these. I have used this, God, I don't even know how many hours I put onto this thing and it's still trucking. Uh, that being said though, it is really nice to be able to go into the field with a cordless version of this 
and do the work I need to do on tube, pipe, railing, anything. Uh, and I also found that these metal frame ones, they have a lot more flex to them, so you can really kind of get in there. Uh, with this one, the springs weren't that great, and I always found that when I would bring the belt in really, really tight, it would stall out or the belt would slip. And uh, this thing, I don't know, it's not great. It served its purpose and it helped me make a lot of money, but um, I, I never got the same. You can see it, just me pressing on it. It doesn't go in as tight as the metal ones. Um, you know, you can really get a tight grab um, and a tight kind of fit around your tubing when you're using one of these metal frame ones, so. Anyway, so that's it, super quick. I just wanted to share this product. I have gotten a ton of use out of it and that's why I decided to make this video. Um, it is the kind of thing that I get, when I share a product like this, when I shared this one in particular, I got so many DMs from people being like, oh, I wanted to buy one of those, but I didn't wanna spend the money because I thought it was junk. I spent the money twice and both of them are pretty good. The only thing that you might wanna look out for is that fit the way this collar grabs onto your grinder. I can say confidently that it fits on this variable speed cordless Milwaukee. I don't know if it'll fit on other grinders. I haven't tried it on other grinders, um, but there is some measurements on the Amazon links you can kind of test and see, and I'm sure you could make like a shim or something. And if you don't want to go this route, you can get one of these corded ones that you can plug in. Uh, again, these work fine too, but I would kind of opt for one that has this sort of metal frame and uh, you know, then you'll have a cord. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the links down below. I'll put them in the description of the video and I'll pin a comment with links on where you can get this stuff. Uh, you can buy it for yourself and give it a try. The belts, I'm kind of just using whatever I can find in the inch and a half by 30 length. It's a little bit kind of on the fringes. I haven't found too many great high quality belts that work with that. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, if I keep digging, I'll find something. Or if you find something, leave a comment down below. Hope you enjoyed this quick little video. My name is Chris Zepp from Make Everything. Follow me here on Instagram and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time.